In this video, I want to share with you a fascinating doubt that Charles Darwin himself expressed in a letter that he wrote, a doubt about his own evolutionary understanding, the idea of, of materialist explanation of human origins. And I want to share with you a very uh, short clip from a fascinating uh, interview, a uh, discussion uh, about eight months ago at the Hoover Institution in the States. Um, it's called By Design, Behe, Lennox and Mayer on the evidence for a creator. And it's a very long video uh, discussing Charles Darwin, his ideas, intelligent design and why there is evidence of a mind that created uh, the universe, that created us. And this short clip I want to share with you is just amazing. Um, the British uh, scientist, mathematician called John Lennox, um, and uh, he, he's a Christian, uh, a passionate believer in God. And he has come up with, I think, the most profound, compelling and convincing argument uh, for uh, against the idea of a naturalism in science. So the idea that we are random, mindless chance products of evolution, we as human beings. And he says this makes no sense at all. And he gives an excellent, I think, reason why it's false. Um, and he, he does it with great wit, great erudition, very articulate, a brilliant man. Now, he's actually a professor of mathematics at the University of Oxford. He's also uh, a trained scientist, teaches science there as well. Uh, but he is a Christian apologist. But for our purposes, um, everyone, I think, be they Jew, a Jew or Christian or Muslim or a Unitarian, a theist, uh, can perhaps benefit from uh, what he says. Um, and he references in this short clip uh, the work of a guy called Thomas Nagel. Now, he wrote this book, which I've read, called uh, Mind and Cosmos, Why the Materialist Neo-Darwinian Conception of Nature is Almost Certainly False. Uh, it's a great cover design. And uh, Nagel's interesting because he's actually a very distinguished American professor of philosophy at New York University. And interestingly, an atheist. You think, how can atheists argue this? But anyway, he does. He sees, in his view, the incoherence, uh, the contradiction, the deep problem at the heart of the materialist understanding of origins, our, our own origins. And it says on the, uh, the dust jacket here, to give a summary, really, of the book, the modern materialist approach to life has conspicuously failed to explain such central mind-related features of our world as consciousness, intentionality, uh, meaning, and value. This failure to account for something so integral to nature as mind, argues philosopher Thomas Nagel, is a major problem, threatening to unravel the entire naturalistic world uh, picture, extending to biology, evolutionary theory, and cosmology. So he sees as a real threat, this problem, to the whole of materialist science. And um, there's a wonderful quote, just a sentence on page seven, where he says, almost everyone in our secular culture has been browbeaten into regarding the reductive research program as sacrosanct on the ground that anything else would not be science. So the way that we're we're pushed to compel, pressured into seeing um, exploring the world around us with a particular reductive methodology. Um, and he's, he sees this obviously as highly problematic because it cannot account, he thinks, uh, for uh, features of our world such as consciousness, meaning, value, intentionality. I say he's an atheist, but he's arguing very much like a theist, oddly. I don't have an explanation uh, for that, but I do recommend this book, Mind and uh, Cosmos, um, published by Oxford University Press, uh, by the way. But I want to share with you now this clip I mentioned. Um, I think it's huge fun. John Lennox uh, is an amazing uh, mind. Uh, one day, inshallah, um, I will uh, be able to have him as a guest on this channel. So far, not being successful in getting him to come on, but inshallah, he will. So here is um, John Lennox's extraordinary argument as to why we human beings cannot be uh, the product of blind, irrational, meaningless, non-directive evolutionary process. Enjoy. Now, here's where Darwin helped me massively by expressing in a letter a profound doubt. He said, you know, and I'm only paraphrasing because I haven't got the quote in my head. He said, you know, I'm troubled by the fact 
that if my explanation is correct, then how do we account for the human capacity for rational thought? He said, after all, if we started with lower animals and a monkey's mind, he said, well, is there any thinking in a monkey's mind? Now, hold that just for a moment, because I have lots of fun with my scientific friends. I sometimes ask them, what do you do science with? And of course, they name some expensive machine. I say, no, no. Oh, they say, you mean your, and they're about to say mind when they realize that's not politically correct. And they say your brain. I said, OK, well, I believe the brain and the mind are separate. But what is your brain? Um, give, me the, give me the brief history of the brain. I ask them. And I've done this many times. It's fascinating. And they say, well, the brain in the end is the end product of a, a mindless, unguided process. And I smile at them and I say, and you trust it? Uh, I say, now tell me honestly, that computer you use every day, if you knew that it was the end product of a mindless, unguided process, would you trust it? Now here's the thing. I have spoken with dozens of leading scientists and pushed them on this, and every single one has said no. I said, you have a problem. Because you are giving me an argument that undermines rationality. And they turn to me and, and they say, where did you get that argument? I said, well, firstly, from Charles Darwin. They say, I don't believe you. And then I quote Darwin. Yeah. Darwin's doubt. This not was his the other one, doubt. Yes. That's his other doubt. Yep. Darwin's doubt about the reliability of human of rationality. Yep. Now, this, to my mind, goes to the heart of the implication of the whole business. And it's why I believe that there is an intelligence behind the universe. I'm a mathematician. All mathematicians and scientists are people of faith, not necessarily in God, but they believe in the rational intelligibility of the universe. And now, the what's, of the mind. Uh, yes, that. exactly. Yeah. And therefore, what do they base that on? If you base that on a mindless, unguided evolutionary process, you're destroying rationality. C.S. Lewis saw that in the 1940s. He said, any theory that undermines rationality cannot be true because you're using your rationality to get to it. Alvin Planting has worked on it, but the most interesting person who brings it now to the fore is Thomas Nagel, the philosopher in New York. And he says there's something wrong here because if you follow evolutionary naturalism, it undermines the very rationality you need to believe, not only in evolutionary naturalism, but in any theory at all. So my major problem, uh, Peter, in all of this is not the mathematics. That's just an interesting bit of evidence. It's that here I am engaged in a rational discipline of mathematics. That all dissolves if the evolutionary naturalistic um, account is true. In other words, I often say to people, shooting yourself in the foot is painful, but shooting yourself in the brain is fatal. Mm -hmm. <laughs>